Okay, in this video, we wanna look at a solution to problem number A3 from the 2004 Putnam. But before we do that, I wanna tell you a little, bit a little bit of a story about 2004. So in 2004, I was diving at Indiana University. Uh, two of my teammates actually ended up going to the Olympic Games from um, that team. But our team had a really uh, funny crash video which can also be found on YouTube. So search Indiana Diving Bloopers if you wanna see see me crash on a dive while I was in college. Okay, so now let's look at the statement to this problem. So we want to define this sequence as follows. So we'll call it un for n equals zero to infinity. And so the first three terms are all one. So u0, u1, and u2 are all equal to one. And then u n after that is defined by this following recursion given by a determinant formula. So the determinant of this two by two matrix, un, un plus one, un plus two, and un plus three is n factorial. And the goal is to show that un is an integer for all n bigger than or equal to zero. So that's not clear here because even though these are all integers, it could be that after you get high enough up into the un, you need these to be rational numbers in order to perfectly meld together to give you n factorial over here. Okay, so let's look at some hints and then I'll give you like some time to work on this, maybe pause the video and give it a go. So the, there are three major hints. The first one is really what we want to do is find a closed form for un. So you can, do, you can arrive at this two different ways. You can either find a recursion on un that recursively proves that it's an element of the integers or you can find a closed form. Finding a closed form is just as easy as um, finding a recursion, but then if you've got a closed form you know immediately that it's an integer. Then the next hint is built in to the structure of the problem and that is the n factorial is a hint to look for something similar. So an object that's similar to a factorial, be it some sort of rising power or some sort of falling power or some sort of binomial coefficient or so on and so forth. So anytime you've got a problem where you've got some sort of factorial in it, which is re recall repeated multiplication with uh, the numbers going up or down, then maybe your solution has something similar. Then finally, and this is one that a lot of students don't like very much, and to be honest, I didn't like this method for a really long time. It took me a long time to get my head wrapped around it. The real method here is we want to work out lots of cases and then guess and prove. So we're not just working out cases and calling it done, we're working out cases guessing the structure of UN and then carefully proving that structure of UN. So when I was writing my uh, PhD thesis, my advisor told me to do a certain part of it just by guessing and proving and I was like, no, 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 that's not real math. But it turns out that is real math and a lot of like really important research math is done that way. Okay, so I'll give you guys some time to do this. Make sure to pause the video and try these hints to solve this problem and then we'll come back and get started. So like I said, we're gonna follow this strategy that I outlined, which is we're going to guess and prove the identity for UN. In other words, the closed form for UN. And so our first determinant that includes something that we don't know is this one at the very bottom, which is the determinant of U0, U1, U2, and U3. Now we know U0, 1, and 2 are equal to 1, so this is the same thing as the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix, 1, 1, 1, and then U3, and we need this to be equal to 0 factorial, which is equal to 1 kind of by definition. But then a 2 by 2 determinant is defined by AD minus BC. Usually those are the names of the entries. So that gives us uh, U3 minus 1 equals 1. In other words, uh, U3 equals 2. And so let's go ahead and keep a list over here. So here we have U0 equals U1 equals U2 equals 1. And now we have U3 equals 2. So let's work out another one real quick. <laughs> So now we have the determinant of u1, u2, u3, u4 equals the determinant of, now we know these three entries, so they're 1, 1, 2, and then u4, and then we want this to be 1 factorial, which equals 1. But that gives us this nice equation, which is u4 minus 2 equals 1. In other words, uh, u4 equals 3. 
So let's go ahead and add that, u4 equals three. So let's work out another one. So we have the determinant of u2, u3, u4, u5 equals, so this is gonna be the determinant of one, two, three, and then u5, but that needs to be equal to two factorial, which is two. So that gives us u5 minus six equals two. In other words, u5 equals eight. Okay, so let's go ahead and add that up here. So u5 equals eight. <clears throat> okay, so let's do another. So we get the determinant of uh, u3, u4, u5, u6 equals the determinant of, now we know uh, the first several entries of this, so this is gonna be two, three, eight, and then u6 is the one that we don't know, and then this needs to be equal to three factorial, but three factorial is six. So that gives us the equation 2u6 minus 24 equals 6, which is the same thing as 2u6 uh, equals 30. In other words, u6 equals 15. So now we have u6 down here is equal to 15. Now let's take this bottom part and real quick look what happens for u7. Okay, so let's see, I've worked out u7, so the determinant of u4, u5, u6, and u7 is gonna be the determinant of three, eight, 15, u7. We want that to be four factorial, but that means we get the equation three u7 minus 120 equals 24. In other words, u7 equals 48. So we can go ahead and add that here. Great, and now just for structure, let's go ahead and do the same thing for u8. Okay, now we're ready to look at the equation for u8. So I've done a little bit of a trick here, which is nice to remember. So the determinant of u5, u6, u7, and u8. So that's gonna be the determinant of eight, 15, 48, and eight, which we want to be 120. But now we can do some row operations on this matrix in, in order to simplify it if we do the right thing to the value of the determinant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this first column, I should say row or column operations, I'll take this first column and divide it by eight, and then I, have, I still have a true equation if I divide the determinant by eight as well. So notice here I've divided the first column by eight, that gives me one and six. I've divided the determinant by eight, that gives me 120 over eight, which is 15, but that gives me an equation that's much easier to solve. So I have u8 minus 90 is 15, in other words, u8 is 105. So let's go ahead and write that down. So u8 is 105. Now, I think this is kind of enough to get started. We can go over here and see if there is a pattern. And maybe like, now that we have these written down, think about if there's a pattern. Maybe pause the video and try it if you want to. But what I'll say is here, I notice that this eight is equal to uh, four times two. This 15 is equal to five times three. So notice that's a descending product where I've skipped a term. And so four times two, so I've skipped the number three. Five times three, so I've skipped the number four. And then I can take this one actually all the way down to times one. And then next, 48 is the same thing as six times four times two, which is the same kind of thing. And so I have a descending product where I skip one. And now 105 is actually the same thing. That is seven times five times three times one. Great. And then you can check very, very uh, simply that U9, which is uh, eight, times six times four times two actually works in this case. So there's actually kind of a name for this, and this is uh, the double factorial. So this is un equals, so notice it's n minus one double factorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the board, we'll make that our claim, and then we'll prove it. So we guess and checked our way to a conjecture for a closed form for un on the last board, and now we wanna prove it. So let's just recall that we had for n bigger than or equal to three, un equals this n minus one double factorial, which let's recall this is n minus one times n minus two, all the way down to three times one if n is even, and if n is even, then n minus one is odd, so this is a 
product of descending odd numbers. And then it's n minus one times n minus three all the way down to four times two, where that case is when n is odd, which means n minus one is even. So we've got this descending product of even numbers. Okay, and I should say here that we still have our same setup. So u1 is the same thing as u0, which is the same thing as u2, which equals one. So we're gonna prove this by induction. And we're actually going to need several base cases, and that's because since this formula only takes over for n bigger than or equal to 3, we can't do our induction step until we have uh, u3 in this spot right here. Which means if we have u3 in this spot right here, then we're going to need down to u4, u5, and u6 proved in the induction hypothesis. So, uh, sorry, in our base case. So we'll take our base case to be n equals 3, 4, 5, or 6. But then we actually did this on the last board. That actually built all of these formulas. And for instance, we have uh, u3 was equal to 2, but that's equal to three minus one double factorial. We also had u4 was equal to three, but that's equal to four minus one double factorial, and so on and so forth. So in other words, this holds for n equals three, four, five, and six by previous board. Okay, now let's make our induction hypothesis, and this is actually a strong induction hypothesis, which means we're going to assume this is true, not just for a single case before, but for a bunch of cases before. So in other words, we're going to suppose for all k between 3 and uh, n plus 3, we have the formula is holding. So uk equals k minus one double factorial. And then from here, what we wanna do is look at the next case. So notice we have the determinant of uh, un, un plus one, un plus two, and un plus three equals n factorial. So that's like given as part of our definition of this sequence. But we know un, un plus one, and un plus two. So what that tells us is that the determinant of um, n minus one double factorial and then n double factorial goes here, and then n plus one double factorial goes here, and then this is our unknown, u n plus three. This is going to equal n factorial. So now taking the determinant here, that gives us this n minus one double factorial times u n plus three minus n double factorial times n plus one double factorial equals n factorial. Great, that's just the definition of the determinant. So we can take this equation and solve for un plus three and show that we get the right thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this thing up here. Okay, so I've moved our equation up. We've got n minus one double factorial times un plus three, and then n double factorial times n plus one double factorial equals n factorial. We wanna solve that guy for un plus three. And we're going to do that by noticing that this guy right here has a really nice structure. So let's see what that is. So let's notice that if we take n double factorial times n plus 1 double factorial, that's going to be the following shape. So this guy right here is going to be n times n minus 2 times n minus 4 all the way down. And then this one right here is going to be n plus 1 times n minus 1 all the way down. Now one of these is even and one of these are odd. So one of these is going to end in a 4 times 2 and the other one is going to end in a 3 times 1. Now the next thing that we want to do is interweave these together. So notice that we'll weave all of these terms inside of these terms, and that is going to give us an n plus 1 factorial. So that means we can replace these two double factorial falling terms with a single factorial. Okay, great. But now we can add that to both sides of the equation, and that gives us this. So n minus 1 double factorial un plus 3 equals um, n factorial plus n plus 1 factorial. 
Now the next thing that we can do is notice that n plus 1 factorial is equal to n plus 1 times n factorial, which means we can factor an n factorial out of this, and that'll give us n factorial, and then we'll be left with n plus 1 times a co or plus a coefficient of 1 here, so n plus 2. Okay, fantastic. But notice that's going to give us un plus 3 equals n plus 2 times n factorial over n minus 1 double factorial. So again, I'm going to go ahead and move this up, and we're almost to the end. Okay, so I've brought our equation up from the bottom. So we have un plus 3 is this n plus 2 times n factorial and then n minus 1 double factorial. So now let's go ahead and write out some of the terms here. This is going to be n plus 2 and then n and then n minus 1 and then n minus 2, n minus 3, all the way down to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So I've probably written out more than we really need, but um, it's going to be useful for us. And then notice here we'll have n minus 1 double factorial. So that's going to be n minus 1. We're going to skip 1, n minus 3, all the way down. And then we're going to have one of two things here. We'll either end at 4 times 2 or we'll end at 3 times 1. Okay, great. And maybe you'd want to write this out in cases, but I don't think it's like super important as long as you argue it carefully. Notice if you end in 4 times 2, then this 4 and this 2 cancels. If you end in 3 times 1, then this 3 and this 1 cancel. But either way you have it, every other term cancels like that, leaving us with n plus 2 n, n minus 2, n minus 4, so on and so forth, either ending in 4 times 2 or 3 times 1, depending on the parity of the number. So in other words, that's going to be n plus 2 double factorial. But that follows this uh, structure. Notice that's the same thing as n plus 3 minus 1 double factorial as needed. But the important thing for our problem is that all of these are inside the integers, obviously, because they're factorials of natural numbers. So that's a good place to stop.